the special holiday zip trip on 7 News. Welcome to Christmas at Biltmore in Asheville. 7 News Live. We're on a zip trip. And welcome back. We are inside Biltmore, inside the house here in the banquet hall. And I, I still can't get over how they used to have dinner here. They've got the ma monster table that can seat up to 64 with the right configuration, 13 courses. And the Vanderbilt's had a big rule, big rule, no phones at the table. So. Uh, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 Here all night. They know okay. how to host, huh? Yeah, that, that last line's unconfirmed, <laughs> by the way. But we've still got 30 more minutes ahead of you. A lot of good stuff. We do, yeah. We're going to finish up talking about all the things you can do outside of the Biltmore House. There's plenty to do, including my favorite, wine. Oh, goodness. We're going to go double hard on wine this half hour. Because we're talking about uh, Dan Bickford's blends and brews mm -hmm. and how the winery produces two million bottles Amazing. of wine. Impressive. Yeah. Neat. All right, and let's talk weather, why don't we? It's mm -hmm. a great morning across the upstate and western North Carolina. We are chilly. starting out where we should this time of year. That's low 30s in the mountains, 40s and 30s in the upstate. We'll see plenty of sunshine throughout the day and a great looking afternoon. We're talking highs today near 60 degrees area wide for the upstate and western North Carolina. A great looking Friday heads your way. All right, that's a look at our forecast. Let's check in as we take a look at our live drive traffic with Stephen. All right, thank you, Malachi. It's about that time. Uh, on the southbound lane of 85, seeing some congestion. It's kind of slowed down a little bit. It's gotten better, I should say, starting to see yellow rather than red. And earlier we saw some cars backed up all the way back here to mile marker 56. That's not the case right now, just seeing a little bit of yellow. Nothing too out of the ordinary for our morning. But other than that, it's been a pretty quiet start out on the roadways. No accidents, no delays really to report. Right now, just make sure you're being careful going through this area. And then once you get to mile marker, uh, you know, 57, just slow down. Just be cautious, buckle up and of course go the speed limit. Now let's look at our live drive traffic. The time is 831. Let's send it back out to the Biltmore estate as our zip trip continues with Fred and Olivia. Well, of course, when you come to Biltmore, you want to bring your families here during Christmas. And of course, if you bring your children along with you, you want to see Santa, right? And there's something really happening that's very special with your Santa visits Tell this us. year. That's right, because uh, this is the 20th year on the job for Santa Jim Lewis. You're going to find him in Antler Hill Village. <laughs> Jim says he's taken photos with four generations of families here at Christmas for Billboard. He's even had one five generation group wow. during his time as the Jolly Old Elf. That's a pretty impressive. That's incredible. And of course, another thing that's incredible here during Biltmore at Christmas time is the winery. Right, and in this special edition of 7 News Blends and Brews, Dan Bickford takes us inside. In the 1970s, George Vanderbilt's grandson, William Cecil, first planted grapevines beside the Biltmore House. It took a little longer for the winery to open. We've been here since 1985 which is surprising to a lot of people. Uh, we're one of the older wineries in the state of North Carolina. The present day winery used to be a dairy. We have uh, a 50 acre vineyard on the Biltmore Estate property. Uh, when guests visit, you won't really see it, but it's on the west side of the property. Sharon Fenshack started as assistant winemaker in 1999. Yeah, she has been the head winemaker since 2018, overseeing the production of around 40 different varieties. We try to make the wines for everyone. Uh, they're not extremely dry or extremely sweet. They're just really right in the middle. Having a vineyard in a cooler mountain area carries some challenges. When the grapes have bud break, you know, when the little buds are coming out, um, often it's we're still in frost season. And so we have uh, wind machines and irrigation that we can protect the buds with to a certain temperature. But in, in many years, we'll lose a little bit of the crop to freeze or frost conditions. Grapes are brought in from elsewhere in North Carolina and from the West Coast, covering varieties that don't grow well here and to cover the sheer volume of product. There are two tank rooms like this at the Biltmore. These tanks are partially responsible for nearly two million bottles of wine a year. This wine is actually from North Carolina, from our vineyard property. Uh, it's a filled blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc and Merlot. While people are drawn here year round, Christmas brings something special. This is our Christmas at Biltmore Sparkling. You can see uh, 
those lovely bubbles coming out of the, the bottle. Uh, the base for this particular wine is Muscat Canelli. Uh, it's extra dry. It's the first year for this sparkling variety of Christmas wine with Christmas red and white blends making their annual appearance. The Biltmore is focused on making sure that all of this is sustainable. Different ways of doing that is uh, water conservation, um, you know, less pesticides, using alternative oak in, in some of the wines. This past year we actually, um, in the realm of sustainability, have a new composting facility on site. The most exciting thing is when we have a North Carolina product, the grapes from our vineyard that then we produce into a wine. Uh, and you know you see that from start to finish and you're just so proud of all of the hard work and effort that it took. I just want to toast the holidays to Carolina Blends and Brews and Dan Bickford. Happy holidays to you and all of your people at home. Enjoy responsibly. Cheers to you, Dan Bickford and Carolina Blends and Brews. Really impressive the numbers that they mm -hmm. kind of pump out of the winery. And also just important to note before you come to the Biltmore, something that you'd want to look into to book your tour because it's such a fun part of really what makes is. the Biltmore Christmas. So many things going on here. You can learn more about Blends and Brews in that section at WSPA.com. We'll send it back to you, Stephen. The time right now is 836, a 7 News update. We now know the names of a man and woman killed in what Pickens County deputies are calling a murder-suicide. The coroner tells us the bodies of Brian Davis and Lisa Young were found inside their home Tuesday night. Deputies say they heard a gunshot when they arrived on Eden's Drive. Young had been shot to death and had other visible injuries. Davis was shot underneath his chin and died at the scene. The Pickens County Sheriff Sheriff says it appears Davis shot Young before they arrived and his death was self-inflicted. A Greenville bar found in violation of several city requirements is now closed. Days after a shooting killed 38-year-old Keon Robinson at Red at 28th in Greenville, a city spokesperson says inspectors were called out to the bar, later citing zoning and occupancy violations. According to the Greenville Code Enforcement, the business had its, uh, its conditional use zoning permit revoked on December 1st. The section of the code violated by Reds was given for its failure to comply with any terms, conditions, or limitations agreed on by city officials. Nearby business owners say Reds is a popular spot at night, telling us at times the area is overcrowded. Sometimes our bakers will be coming in at midnight, 2 a.m., right around the time the club is either like really busy or just closing. And there have definitely been times where like we couldn't get through the parking lot. There were cars in the street everywhere, kind of people uh, acting rowdily. Despite the violations, Red at 28th has an opportunity to appeal the decision. We reached out to the owners for comment, but haven't heard back yet. The Jewish community in Greenville came together to celebrate the first night of Hanukkah. Members of the Shabbat Jewish Center of Greenville in the upstate held their first Hanukkah parade Thursday. The parade weaved through downtown Greenville, ending at Ice on Main, where people skated and lit the menorah. There will be another Hanukkah celebration in downtown Greenville on Sunday. It'll be held at Noma Square at 4 o'clock. We have much more when 7 News continues. Here's a live look at the Biltmore Estate as our zip trip continues in just a couple of minutes. Seven News is zip tripping from the Biltmore Estate in Asheville. Good morning, yes, back at the Winter Garden. I love being in this area because it is so festive. Many people coming for Christmas and the holidays. This is a tradition for many, Leanne. Absolutely, and we Donnelly. have a lot of repeat guests coming every Christmas. Very good, mm -hmm. okay, senior PR, you've dealt with everything from movie shoots to guests that want private tours, which is a thing you could do. I didn't know a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Here in the Winter Garden, we're looking at a lot of poinsettias. Yes. That's really neat. Where can you find more poinsettias? More poinsettias are in our conservatory, which is just short walk from Biltmore House. So after you finish your, your festive Biltmore House Christmas visit, mm -hmm. take a walk down to the conservatory. It is full of beautiful poinsettias. I didn't know there were so many different types of that flower, and we think of that as Christmas flower. For sure. Yeah. You know, a lot of people may have a bit of a later tour time mm -hmm. for their house. When they went to sign up for the time, sure. it might be a little later in the mm -hmm. day. They might think, well, shoot, we wanted to go a little earlier, but you can go there before, too, Absolutely. Right? You can start your day as early as 8.30 when the gates open. Okay. You can come in and visit the conservatory and take and then if you wanted to 
uh, walk the grounds as well. We got so, other options, Leanne, yes. including my favorite, the yes. wine, the vineyards back yes. there. We like to hear a little bit more about also Antler Village. Antler Hill Village, that is where the winery is located. On the weekends, we have visits with Santa there for I Christmas. Didn't know that. yes. That's huge. Yes. Is he there all day or just a certain part of the weekend? In the afternoon. Very good. Yes. Okay. And he's been with us for 20 years, Santa Whoa. Jim. Yes. Santa's busy this time of year. Yes. I mean, he is making stops all over, plus the delivering of gifts. That's right. Very That's impressive. Right. Speaking of, this is a place where you could get Christmas gifts. Absolutely. We, we do got. have stores here on property, lots of beautiful pieces for people to uh, do a little Christmas shopping when they're here. I've got ornaments here. Yes. I know I always leave with a bottle of wine. Absolutely. So I yes. think it's cool. A nice yeah. little souvenir to yeah. bring home with you as well. What age groups are you finding really enjoy this place? Touring the house, is that only for adults? or kids friendly too? Kids love it and and you know adults as I mean everybody I mean all ages come on it's Christmas at Biltmore I mean it's beautiful it's festive it's joyful and it's something we're really proud of and we want people to come and enjoy it with their families. You have a couple of different options for when you come and visit mm -hmm. you can do a tour at the house mm -hmm. or is there also candlelit something? Yes yeah, so in the evenings we have candlelight Christmas evenings mm -hmm. at Biltmore so you're touring Biltmore house in the evening when it's it's very cozy. I mean, this house is huge, but when it's dark outside, you yeah. come in and it's lit by fireplace light, mm -hmm. fireplace and uh, all the ornaments and candles, etc. It just feels cozy and it's a, a whole different experience than daytime. So you can enjoy this until January as well. A little January bit into 7th. January 7th mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. when you can enjoy all these beautiful decorations. Malachi, you might want to be inside for some of those cooler <laughs> evenings, right? Yes, right? I don't know if that candle's going to do much. <laughs> <Burr>. <laughs> Well, thankfully, they have a lot of fireplaces going, like the ones behind us, and the weather over the next couple of days should be mild, but we're going to be tracking some colder weather and some rain as we head to your weekend. But before we leave, let's take a live look outside and show you what's going on as our zip trip from the beautiful Biltmore State in Asheville continues on this Friday morning. Welcome back everyone. We are out here enjoying a fantastic Friday morning at the beautiful Biltmore State in Asheville as our holiday zip trip continues and we are looking at a day of sunshine, dry weather and warm temperatures heading into your afternoons. But it's a cold start to the morning whether you're in the upstate or the mountains. We start out with temperatures in the 30s in western North Carolina. It's 30 right now in Asheville, 32 in Rutherfordton. We have a mixture of 30s and 40s in the upstate, all above freezing, but definitely the kind of day that you want to make sure you have that coat as you head out the door this morning. But the good news is that you can shed a few of those layers as we go through the afternoon. We're partly to mostly sunny this morning, a few clouds here and there, and that's giving us a little filtered sunlight early, but bright sunshine heads our way this afternoon. And with that, combined with a nice little southwesterly breeze, we're talking temperatures today in the low 60s in the upstate. We'll even see 60s in western North Carolina. Great looking day. Again, if you have outdoor plans, a little decorating, a little shopping, anything you want to do outdoors today, you're in great shape because the weather cooperates. And take advantage of today because our weather changes dramatically over the next couple of days. So sunshine today is our hour by hour shows you mostly clear, dry and warm tomorrow as warm, but we're going to see a few more clouds rolling in. And with those clouds on Saturday, you may see a few spotty showers. Not big rain chances, but a few spotty showers here and there might affect your afternoon, early evening. Great news, though, for the parades that were put off from last week to this weekend. They're in great shape on Saturday. Sunday for everyone is going to be a very different story. As we advance our time into Sunday, you'll notice the showers early in the day and then the heavy rain moving in midday, early afternoon. We have a cold front that's going to push that rain through. And for some of us, we're going to get as much as an inch of rain. Again, anywhere from about a half an inch to an inch of rain expected during the day on Sunday. And some of those showers could include thunderstorms. So just be very weather aware heading into the weekend, especially for your Sunday plans. Not a bad day for indoor plans. As we go through the next week, though, we clear out, dry out, and cool down quite a bit. From 60s this weekend, we'll see highs in the 50s next week. Those lows drop below freezing, so keep that in mind. And again, Sunday, a weather impact day because rain heads our way. In western North Carolina, we see sunshine today. Highs like the upstate are in the 60s. Rain chances increase this weekend, especially on Sunday, and we're dry, clear, and colder as we take a look at next week, where highs are in the 40s, lows are in the 20s. All right, that's a look at your weather. The very latest from here at the Biltmore State in Asheville with your seven day forecast. Let's check in with Steven with a look at our live drive traffic. 
All right, thank you, Malachi. We're heading into the weekend on a pretty good note. Things seem to cool off, cool, cooled off on the interstate right now. A decent bit of traffic in the southbound lane here near Pelham Road on 85 near mile marker 54. The camera's frozen there, but you can see that southbound lane. A decent amount of cars, but nothing too crazy that'll slow you down right now. Just some typical congestion there that that uh, congestion near GSP has seemed to kind of disperse right now. But of course, if you are heading through that area, you always want to be cautious. As for areas in Spartanburg, Anderson, all of that and through the upstate, everything is looking clear and good to go. That was a look at your live drive traffic. The time is 850. Greenville County first responders are coming together to collect toys for local kids during the holidays. What started out of the trunk of a patrol car nine years ago has turned into a much larger event for the community. Crews work overnight and into the morning, accepting donations of new and unwrapped toys for local kids. All you have to do is pull up to the curb of out front of the Bon Secours Wellness Arena. It's grown. We're so amazed at how it's grown. The community gets involved. We have Greenville County Schools, the EMS, um, and all the agencies in the upstate have came together to just serve their community in a different way. Event organizers say officers and deputies will drive around and gift the toys to kids next weekend in the Greenville County area. You can drop off toys until 10 a.m. this morning. 7 News will be right back. Here's a live look over Biltmore Park on this Friday morning. You're watching 7 News. Welcome back, everyone. We take one more look at weather. Why don't we? We're, mm -hmm. we're clear, we're dry, we are sunny. Great looking day today. We're going to see plenty of sunshine. Highs are in the low 60s today, 60s this weekend, but rain chances late Saturday, better chance for rain on Sunday. That's the upstate and the mountains. So we have a weather impact day. Keep that in mind. And next week it's clear and much colder for the upstate and the mountains. One last look at our live drive traffic takes us to mile marker 54.5. If you're heading through this area, everything is all clear. Now let's look at our live drive traffic, sending it back out to the Biltmore. Well, if you're not in Christmas spirit now after what we brought you over the past four hours <laughs> here at hopeless. Biltmore, I don't know what else we can do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Job, <laughs> this has been great. Favorite parts? It's been so fun. I love the library. Did you guys see the old mm -hmm. decorations? The I tree sneaked down favorite. there. I don't think I was supposed to, but oh, I did. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. I, I love the grounds. I love how they have everything as soon as you walk on actually even before you get here mm -hmm. you can see it from the roads it's mm -hmm. just fantastic no so. detail overlooked i like that this tree isn't even half the size of the well it is half the size right, and it right. is massive it's like eight friends exactly yeah. maybe 20. unbelievable just we just loved walking in here yeah. today i mean it was 4 15 in the morning something dark. like that it was dark but i mean the lights were on it looked oh, fantastic it right. just lit and, up. and how how about a shout out to the the crew here at the biltmore for the work yes. that they do Yay. and the time that they yes. put in and thank, <laughs> thank you guys you. for putting up with us yes. we appreciate Deal that with as us well. all yeah. leanne and marissa especially for sure. so helpful for us <laughs> and not only great today but of course they're great all year long yeah, true. yeah. yeah. and we will be emailing you <laughs> that's right exactly we will do that for sure oh they were terrific we have had a great time, and hey, jump back over to Channel 7.